Hello, buzz touchers. Today we are going to try to do something a little bit different, something that we haven't done before. Um, up until this time, we have focused a lot of our efforts on providing tutorials for um, Mac OS X and Windows, uh, various flavors, XP, Vista, Windows 7, whatever. Today, we are going to do an Eclipse install on Linux. And in particular, uh, we are going to do Ubuntu 12, uh, which I have downloaded and installed on my VMware player. So this is the latest version of Ubuntu, and um, we're going to show you how easy it is to install um, the uh, Android uh, ADT package from Android on a Linux system. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, we can probably expect a few problems, but we'll work through them as we, as we get there. So um, basically you're going to go to the same place to download the executable as you did before. Um, so we have the download for other platforms. And in this case, I'm going to pick the ADT bundle Linux x86.zip file because I am running a 32-bit version of Ubuntu. Uh, if you click on system requirements, you'll know that there are some for uh, Linux. Um, in particular, you have to have a GNU C library, glibc of 2.7 or later. And um, basically, you have to have Ubuntu 8.04 or later. And then 64-bit distributions must be capable of running 32-bit applications. And I am running 32-bit, so that's all good. So first thing you want to do then is probably go ahead and download the, uh, the version that you want. So again, you come here and hit the uh, link, and it'll download it. And I have already downloaded that. Um, if you come here into your folders, <coughs> in the download folder, I have that ADT bundle Linux x86.zip, just like we needed. So we are good there. Uh, so the one thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we meet the glibc version requirement. Um, so I did a little Googling to figure out how to find that. And if you um, basically run this command right here, um, you will get a whole bunch of information that includes this provides line. Um, and I'll show you how to actually grep for that so that you don't have to go through the whole thing. So let's just copy this command. Um, hit copy. Now if you come up to your dash home, and this is just a tad slow, so uh, you can do a search for terminal. And go ahead and launch terminal. And that basically gives you a command prompt. So we've copied a command, and if you go ahead and hit paste, and then enter, you notice you're going to get a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, and if you don't really want to look through all that to find the information that you want, you can run the same command, send it or pipe it to grep, and then provides. And this will search all the up output above for a line that starts with provides, and then gives you the output. It provides, and if you notice here, it provides glibc2.13-1. Um, so if we come back over here to our requirements, we needed to have uh, 2.7 or later, and we have 2.13 per our terminal, 2.13, so we are actually good there. So um, that's the requirement that we need. So we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and install it. So if you come back in your home folder, again, I've already downloaded this to save some time. Ubuntu is pretty good, and it provides a lot of tools for unzipping and things of that nature. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click on this, and I'm going to um, open with Archive Manager, and it's going to unzip this for you. Um, so actually, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that over there, and it should put that whole thing in there. Yep, so down here it says Extracting the Files. So it's going to go ahead and do this extraction for us. The same thing as using 7-zip or WinRAR or WinZip or any of that other kind of stuff. This is just the Ubuntu version of it. So I'll give it a few seconds, or hopefully not too long, to unzip this. <coughs> of course, when you're actually doing a tutorial, it takes forever. Went really fine last night when I practiced. Oh, 
Uh, there we go. So it actually goes pretty quick. I think it goes faster than 7-Zip uh, worked on Windows the other night. So it's kind of cool. So it is extracting the files uh, into a folder here in the home home folder or the downloads rather. So give it a couple more seconds. Okay, so it's all done. So let's go ahead and exit out of this program. So you notice we now have a folder here in downloads. I'm sorry, ADT bundle. Double click on there. Gives us the Eclipse and SDK things just like on the Windows uh, tutorial we did the other day. So if I come back here in home, I'm going to go ahead and create a folder called Android. And this is where I'm going to put the ADT, uh, Android ADT the files. So it's called Android. And then if we go back into downloads, <coughs> copy this folder, or you can even cut, whichever you want to do, depending on excuse me, how much space you have. Let's hit home again. Go into Android and paste it. And this should take just a few seconds since it's pasting it all to the same disk. It's just putting it in a different uh, file structure. <coughs> Excuse me. Give it a few more seconds. 22 or 23. This is actually pretty quick. Especially in comparison to Windows sometimes. Alright, almost done. All right, so we have copied that over. It is now in our home Android folder. Double click on here, uh, go into Eclipse, and that's what we want to do is we want to launch Eclipse. So we have this Eclipse executable here, so just go ahead and double click on that. And bummer, it says that a Java JRE or JDK must be available in order to run this. So no virtual machine was found. So that is a problem, and I think we actually kind of knew that, but I wanted to do this for a demo anyways. So hit close. Now if you come back to your terminal, um, you can go ahead and type in which Java, and it won't find anything, so it says that Java is not installed. So try a Java-V, which is for version. It's going to go out and try to find a version of Java. It's not available, but it is saying that you that Java does exist in these packages and you can install it. So the one that we want and the one that I worked on the other day is this one. Uh, this open JDK7. So let's go ahead and install that. So let's just copy that. And then right here it says try this command plus the selected package to install the Java. So let's try that. sudo apt get install paste the name of that and hit enter. It's going to ask you for your password for your account. And it is going out and it is going to go ahead and try to install it. So it's asking if you want to install this. Um, do you have a certain amount of space? So on and so forth. The answer is yes. Hit enter. And it is now going to go and install Java. So this is the JDK. This is really what we want, not the JRE. Even though it said the JRE, it's really looking for JDK. So this is pretty easy. One command goes out, gets everything. So now if you do a Java-V, well, yep, that happened to me the other night too. So I don't know what the deal is with that. But if you do which Java, now you'll notice that there is a Java installed. <coughs> there is a Java installed, excuse me and install a user bin Java. Okay, so we now have our Java dependency handled. So let's go back here and try to run Eclipse again. Double click on that and BAM! <coughs> Android developer tools coming up just like on Windows, just like on Mac. Except now we are running it in Ubuntu. Ubuntu 12, which is Linux, which is free, by the way. They do ask for a donation, but you don't have to. So just like on all the other ones, we're going to go ahead and use this as a default workspace. So hit OK. And I'm going to minimize that just to get it out of the way. <coughs> I 
in the sodium workstation and pretty much exactly like everything looks like on Windows and Mac. Uh, you may have that welcome screen. I did have this installed last night so I'm thinking for some reason that remembered something that uh, got rid of that welcome screen but you can just kill that and this this will show up. So again I don't usually do the outline. I don't use the declaration pane and I don't use the Java doc pane and I do add a couple. If you come up here to the very top you can do window, show view, and other. Pick Android and pick the windows that you want. So I like the devices one and the log cap and I hit OK. And should add those two views right down here. There you go. So those would be very helpful in your debugging, especially the log cap one because all the um, debug info and everything that's part of BuzzTouch gets logged in there and all kinds of system stuff. And the console will tell you what's going on. Now notice it says DDMS here. Um, if you come over here, there's two consoles, Android and DDMS. You want Android. Now you can toggle them just by clicking, but you do want the Android one. So now we want to go ahead and check out the status of our Android SDK. Make sure that we have everything in there that we want. So let's hit the Android SDK Manager. It's going to go ahead and start it. So again, just like Windows, just like Mac. I mean, seriously, guys, can it get any easier than this? You unzip one thing, make sure you have Java installed, and then it meets another glibc requirement, and bam, you're going. I mean, this is on Linux. It's a free operating system running in VMware Player. It's pretty cool. Definitely Android has made some huge strides with their ADT package here. All right, so it's downloading packages. Show the tools and platform tools are installed, so that's cool. It showed that Android 4.2 is installed. It does not have the Google API, so if you're going to want to run um, Jelly Bean, if you're going to want to test on Jelly Bean, which is Android 4.2, um, with the BuzzTouch app, you're going to want to add the Google APIs. But let's go ahead in here and add the base API for BuzzTouch, which is the Android 2.2 Google API 8. So you want to hit the SDK platform and the Google APIs. And let's do the install to packages. Accept all. And install. And now it is downloading all this stuff. And uh, should be installed in a few minutes. So rather than have everybody sit here and watch this download install process because it all happens automatically, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording and then I will come back on when it's all ready to go. And I promise you, you're not missing anything. Okay, well, that took an amazing amount of time to download and install that. Well, actually, about a half an hour, but I think that's just my internet connection and uh, the fact that it was attaching to Google. But anyways, now if you noticed, um, for the Android 2... 2.2 platform. Uh, we have the SDK platform installed and the Google APIs. So those are the minimum. Uh, the Google APIs 8 is the minimum thing that we need for uh, BuzzTouch version 2.0. So let's go ahead and uh, exit out of the SDK manager. Now you will get some sort of things in here in the console. Don't worry too much about those. It's no big deal. Um, so next I want to configure some virtual devices. But I know from experience, after you have installed some new um, SDKs, the best thing to do is to exit Eclipse and then come back in and it'll pick up everything. So let's go ahead and hit exit and it'll save the workspace. Go back into our home folder, start up Eclipse again. Okay, so now if you go up to Window <coughs> and go to Android Virtual Device Manager, uh, we are going to go ahead and define and create an Android virtual device for you to do your testing on. So let's go ahead and hit New. Um, and let's give the AVD a name of Buzz Touch. Now the cool thing about the new AVD 
uh, creator here is that you have a whole bunch of new devices uh, that you can choose from. Before, you pretty much just had a few, and then you could add some other ones, but now you have some pretty cool things. So let's go ahead and pick a Nexus 7. Uh, that's the Google tablet. Give it a target of Google APIs 8. So anything that you have configured in the SDK manager is going to show up here. Uh, but remember, you want to you want to pick the Google APIs, and the reason for that is the uh, Buzz Touch includes the uh, location map features, and that gets included with every download. So in order to get it to compile, you have to have the A Google APIs. Uh, if you don't need the mapping stuff at all, you can take that out of your source code, and then you won't have this dependency on Google APIs. But for the moment, you do. So hit uh, that, and then whatever are these other things you want to do. In a front camera, you know, webcam, whatever. Um, internal storage, 200 megabytes. You know, you need to make sure that you have that much space on the system that you're running this because it'll actually create that size. So go ahead and hit OK. And uh, notice we now have an AVD, Android virtual device, that uh, will get launched when you launch your um, when you launch your code and you go to run your app. So there you have it. There is the installation of the Android ADT on a Linux system, uh, in particular Ubuntu 12. Uh, it's just as easy to install it on Ubuntu as it is Windows 7 or Mac OS X. So that's pretty cool. Um, just a little, you know, you can get um, Android SDK to update the APIs and stuff. Android Virtual Device Manager to uh, create the virtual devices you want to run with. Um, if you want to add some new uh, panes down here, uh, go to Show View and pick the ones that you want. And if you want to check for updates um, of your software, just hit the Check for Updates. And you can also install additional plugins using the Install New Software. So there you go. That is installing the Android ADT on Linux, uh, Ubuntu 12. Um, please hop over to the buzztouch.com forums if you have any questions. Uh, this is Go Northwest, and uh, just let us know if you got any questions, concerns, or problems. Thanks for listening, and happy app developing.